What's up, everybody? This is What's Ian Lenhart, a.k.a. Len Jones, coming at you live from San Francisco, California. And it's a phenomenal day. I'm here, I'm here with easily one of the hardest working people I've met since I've come to San Francisco, and that's no doubt. And you know that's true because this dude, Paul Kesterwani, is that right? Always time? Pretty good. Pretty that good. works, yeah. He's Lebanese, okay? <laughs> this dude, I gotta say off the bat, like in terms of work ethic and badassery and just keeping it real in terms of the startup game, like he's, you just got it. I mean, like, and I say that because every time I get here, you show up, you're the first person at the office, it seems like. You're always there first and you stay till like legit 11 o'clock at night. So your commitment is insane. So All props in. to you. All in, man. All in. Yep. So a little bit of background, you know, co-founder and CEO of Cushion, okay? If y'all ever heard about Cushion, y'all about to find out. Can you kind of give everyone just a brief background of what Cushion is? Sure. So Cushion is an early stage fintech startup and um, what we're doing is pretty simple. We're automating the process of fighting bank fees. Uh, most people hate getting charged like $37 late fees and overdraft charges or interest charges and all that. And um, we've created a pretty crazy way of uh, getting rid of those for you automatically. So yeah, that's awesome. So like bank fees, you have, you have a finance background or like what got you to kind of start a company with bank fees? Cause it, that seems like a very personal thing. Like you must've gotten really pissed off one day and like triggered you to just start yeah. something. So yeah, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't just like one thing that kind of led me to do this. I'm, you know, first of all, like you mentioned, like I'm born here, but I grew up in Lebanon where people are just like, nobody pays a uh, full price for anything. And, um, I was actually auditing my, my parents. My dad actually got hit with a transfer charge for like 600 bucks and my sister was refinancing her um, student loans and she got hit with a massive, massive uh, fee as well. And I was kind of blown away of like, how are these two super smart people in my family getting destroyed by these charges? So I just kind of went on a little personal project to read through the terms of service, audit my own finances, and before I knew it, I was finding shady stuff left and right. Auditing your own finances. Yeah. So, so you became like a, kind of like an accountant. Basically, yeah, and I mean, I have a sales operations background at Twitter where there was a lot of finance work too, so um, I know how to analyze data, and that was a nice little fun project I did uh, at home, and before I knew it, found a ton of fees. Yeah, because you have like a cool background because a lot of people, like 10 years of high impact sales is what he's been doing prior to Cushion. Um, but you've been doing product roles, operation roles, so yep. you've really been able to see it. This your background is so like just greased to, to run a run a company. Yeah, it doesn't make it doesn't make a lot of sense, but yeah, somehow all roads lead to here. So well, you've had like a super successful thing, and we'll kind of get into some of like the hardcore content in a sec. But how did you start out? I'm just curious about that. Like like out of college, I mean, yeah. you know, I've seen that you've contributed to three different companies that has had three different exits, which is very unlike very unheard of. It's very rare. Maybe just very lucky, but maybe maybe not. Right place, right time. Yeah. But like, where did you start? Like, how did you like sure. break? you're breaking like fresh out of college like what were you doing yeah so um, while I was in college I was getting a computer engineering degree a lot of you know writing code and I hated it I hated every second of it um, the only reason I didn't stop is because my dad was like get this degree it'll open up doors for you and you know Middle Eastern father I was like I should probably listen to my dad <laughs> but I was also working at Circuit City super broke selling TVs selling cameras and like uh, laptops I'm like man I'm good at this whole sales thing because I get the tech I'm crushing my numbers, so might as well, uh, maybe when I leave college, I should go into a sales role. Hell yeah. And I got hired by Qualys, which is a security company, and I did the shittiest, shittiest sales role ever, which is just cold calling people all day long. I think Jonathan Santos knows all about cold calling. Continue. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and one thing led to another, and I moved up the ladder pretty quickly on the sales side, but my first, I'll tell you this, my first uh, week at Qualys full-time, I remember looking around at all these like beige cubicles and these people like middle aged, everyone looked depressed and I'm like, like hell no, like this is not for me. And so I knew immediately I wanted to start a company, but I didn't have the skills. So, so that's cool because you just literally peeped it. You caught the vibes. You caught that entrepreneurial bug. You were just like, damn, like I think a lot of times people don't realize there's another option. You know, we've yeah. been forced and you know, college, you know, since you're young, you're yeah. told to go to school, get a job, you know, work in that type of environment. Yeah. But really that whole entrepreneurial mindset is really sweet. It's yeah. cool that you recognize it so young. So how did you, so is that where you got Qualys? Is that where you first went? Yeah. So I had actually interned there as a software developer. They asked me to come What back. is Qualys? Qualys is just a security company. They scan your network and let you know like if hackers can get in, where, and then how to kind of patch that up. Sick. Um, and they're very successful, but I just wasn't feeling it. And a year and a half later, I left. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, and then after that, you moved on to Dacian. So Dacian, yeah. Dacian. So actually, Facebook approached me in 2009 to be their first ever sales engineer. Wait, probably well, should have, probably should have taken that role because then you and I would be on a boat in the Cayman Islands right now, not I, in an accelerator. But um, how does Facebook approach you? Like, how does that even like? How do they do it? Because so they just reached out on LinkedIn. So their recruiter said, "Hey, we're looking for sales engineers. Your background looks pretty good." And um, I was pretty stubborn and uh, gung ho about like working at an early stage startup so i turned that down and went to dacient um which was actually a really good move yeah yeah seriously and they were acquired by twitter yeah so 18 months into my journey there twitter came in and scooped up the company well that's like that's like the dream come true for a lot of startups uh, yeah i mean to be acquired if you're a founder to, yeah that's a great point to, to move forward with that well that's why you're here yeah. and then you worked with twitter what'd you do at twitter so yeah early on at twitter i joined, I joined early 2012 um, one of the handful of folks on the sales operations team, there wasn't a whole lot going on there. And um, my role essentially was pr- pretty much help trying to help the sales team um, generate more money. How do we, which advertisers should we go after? How much should we charge them? And how do we scale that out? So um, I took a very data driven approach, put my crappy coding skills to the test. Yeah, you're a coder too. I can code, but my code is not good at all. So I can hack like a proof of concept and then I give it to a much better engineer to build the real deal. So you're not a coder, like you don't consider yourself a coder. No, no, but like, nobody would. What would you recommend to someone that like wants to kind of get their feet wet with coding? Because like it's another language, am I correct? I don't know anything about. Coding. I mean, it's, there's a ton of different languages, but it's pretty much easier than ever. There's so many like sources online right now, Code Academy and Udemy and Code all, Academy and all that. So it's the the easy stuff like the HTML, CSS is not rocket science, but then yeah, it can get pretty out of control. But it's, everything's doable, man. Just yeah, for put sure. It, put in the work. Guys, drop a one if you've ever used Code Academy. It's really cool that you can literally just decide to be a coder. One of our um, uh, co-founders of our business, Nazar, yeah. he actually, out of school, was a finance major and decided to become a coder after college. Wow. And now is, you know, the CTO of the company and, you know, it's amazing. So it's crazy. That's I love crazy. that story that you can just completely learn a new skill at any time at any place if yeah. you just so choose with all the resources yeah. available, which is insanity. Um, what kind of like, so, so your company right now, it's a bot, right? We so, have, yeah, we have a bot that does all the work behind the scenes. So if you get, basically, let me just explain this very high level. If you use our service, it's a Facebook Messenger bot currently in beta, but all you would do is connect your bank very securely. Immediately, within a minute, our bot tells you if you have any bank fees, and then you just hit one button saying, fight these for me, and you're done. Would you have to connect all your bank accounts? Or? You can just start with like one credit card, like one that you use very often, yeah. and see how it works. And if you're excited about the results, then you can add more accounts. Damn. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's pretty magical because we get people quite a bit of money back within a few hours and it's pretty pretty cool. Is there like an immediate trust right there? Because you know the, the hard yes. part about the financial industry is just yeah. people like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to put my credit card in there, like sure. what's going on. But have you guys found like pushback with that or do you think that like this is a process just super simple and easy? Um, I think there's a, people's hatred for bank fees apparently is so high that they're willing to just take the risk and put in the information. But it's a risk worth doing. On our end, for example, I've worked at three security companies. We have a contractor who's you know, built infrastructure to, to process a billion dollars of transactions each year yeah. securely. So I've kind of assembled a team and hired the right talent along the way to help make sure that this is as secure as it can possibly get. For sure. Um, and yeah, the, the trust happens naturally after we add value. For sure, that's amazing. When you started the business, did you map out all the different pieces that you know you would use? And like, you know, like when sometimes when people start a company, they just they just get started, you know what I mean? Yeah. But did you like go in with it like, look, I'm gonna be needing like these seven to 10 different tools or employees and this different thing. So you just kind of started and just figured it out as you went. Um, it's a combo of both. Like even the idea itself morphed from when I incorporated in November and we're last November and where we are today. And so you can have a good idea of like, yes, we're gonna need a security person uh, at some point, we're gonna need an expert in finance at some point, but you don't need all the answers early on. For sure. Um, yeah, you figure it out as you go. And that's a major key right there in like everything. You know, uh, Paul over here was accepted, his company was accepted into 500 startups, so congratulations, phenomenal. Um, and just really kind of going, can you kind of tell them what 500 is about? Yeah, 500 is just an accelerator, one of the more prestigious accelerators uh, in the world. And uh, they provide a bunch of resources, um, 
so initially they invest uh, some money in the company um, and they surround us by mentors and a bunch of folks who can help us out, help us everything from marketing, sales, product strategy, you name it. And you meet a bunch of awesome folks like Ian over here. I um, love and, Yep, and grow your network. So um, it's all around pretty pretty sweet experience. Yeah, for sure. It's amazing the, the feeling of just being next to people that like if you have a huge problem in your business, you could be like, all right, just holla like two desks down yeah, and there's exactly. another person that's an expert with this. Uh, we recently created an entire new um, uh, outbound lead generation system through uh, four different tools that I got from um, Ala and actually um, the guys at ProdSmart. So like super cool just nice. to be able to link up with them. Yep. So this is something really badass, guys, okay? So just like let me know what you feel about this. Actually, before we get in this, Ala said, what are the main stuff need to be considered initially to enter fintech business apart from just software and development? What are the main stuff need? I mean, at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're actually solving a problem. Um, FinTech is completely flooded right now with uh, copycat businesses. Everyone's like, oh, you cancel subscriptions? We can do that too. Oh, you automate like moving money into a savings account? We can do that too. And investors are beyond, beyond sick of that. And so find a problem, like an actual problem. Ask a bunch of users, how are they solving it today, if they're able to solve it. And then if you have a unique insight on how to do it, put together like a very like lightweight um test see make sure it works and then if it does just run just go 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 yeah that's awesome great question you told me something that's pretty you know exciting the fact once Twitter you know IPO and did their thing you you know made a killing had a great year for yourself it's not bad. Uh, ha happy happy 28 year old it was cool like yeah. what you we won't go into the numbers but it was cool but you spent that money to buy Basically helped my parents buy a house. They were strapped for cash, and so I figured, you know what, this will be a nice thing. They've taken care of me my whole life. Why not repay, repay that? So, what's it like to be able to buy your parents a house? At um, I mean, I wish old. I could buy the whole thing, but everyone knows Bay Area is expensive. Oh, it's in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. but um, it felt good. It felt good, you know. Like, uh, like I said, um, pay, I'm all about paying it forward when it comes to my family, friends, or just random people I meet. So, yeah, uh, felt great. Um, and, and then this is what's even crazier is a lot of the advice I hear from a lot of these different founders is they say before you jump into business for yourself, before you become an entrepreneur, you need to make sure that you have a nice cushion. Yeah, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah. A cushion of money to make sure you're not yeah. like freaking out and like you don't yeah. run into troubles and you're not sleeping on the floor all the sure. time. Um, but you had a different opinion on it and it's pretty badass. Can you explain to these people yeah. what that is? I mean, I don't know if it's logical. Maybe it's like slightly crazy, but um, you know, I think if you have like a family and kids, obviously you do need that. You do need that cushion. You do need to be able to provide. But if it's kind of like you don't have a ton of responsibilities. Um, I like the approach that Tiago here mentioned of like uh, how the Vikings used to like show up somewhere and burn their ships, kind of like we're not going back. And that was my approach of like help my parents buy a house, uh, have just enough money for like eight months of survival and just be like, okay, there is no turning back. There is no like ton of comfort in the bank account. Let's go. And um, that's a good way to wake up every morning and, and hustle because you know that there's no fallback plan. That is badass. Yeah. How are you going to figure it out? Get get rid of plan B and you're going to make sure you go yeah. with plan A. But that's that's intense. It is crazy. That's intense. So yeah. that you're like an all around just like die hard leader, which is cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm all in. I, I there's no I want to make sure that I don't just say it, but just do it. And the team should see that every day. So that's huge. Um, fundraising. Yeah. So have you guys have you had a pretty good experience fundraising? I mean, yeah, we raised an angel round. Um, Fundraising is never fun. You put yourself out there basically uh, to be rejected, essentially. Um, very fortunate that, you know, across the last 10 years, I've worked with a lot of great people and um, helped make them some money. So when it was time to uh, raise money for our company, a lot of them, I guess, believed in, you know, the team and all that. And so fundraising was, the angel round was less painful than I expected. The seed round will probably be a different story. That's cool. Yeah. Did you have to? Did you find in a position where you had a fundraise like right away, or were you able to kind of like build it off of like just bootstrap the whole thing, or did you get into like a, a certain point when you start bringing on employees and people? Like, was there a certain point in your business? Uh, right off the bat, I actually tried to raise a bit of money. I'll explain this because it's actually very important. Right off the bat, I went to some folks who are mentors and people that I've worked with in the past, and we got around um, like eighty-five k, which is not a whole lot of money. And then as we start to approach angel investors, they're like, yeah, your idea sounds great in theory. How about you show us something? So we uh, did a bunch of work for a month. We canceled all of our meetings, did a bunch of work, and then created a prototype that functioned really, really well. 
and then packaged that nicely and then went out to a bunch of uh, angel investors, all of whom, by the way, were like people I knew or introductions from people who had invested and things went a lot smoother from there. And um, I'd say things that you need when you're raising an angel round. So I was completely oblivious, but you need like a one pager, you need some sort of a deck, you need to have a little bit of introduction paragraph about your company. Um, those are, I think, the three main things. Um, and a story. Like you can't just go in and story. talk about features. Like why, what's the problem? Why are you the right team to do it? Why is this a big market? And all that. Even like when somebody said, okay, I'm in, send me your wire transfer instructions. I was like, um, oh shit, I gotta go find a template for that. I don't know what that is. And so I had to do it. So there's a bunch of stuff you just need to get ready. Now you just probably Googled and figured it out then, right? Exactly, and now I've templatized for the future. But, um, templatize. Templatize. I can make up words, right? Templatize is a phenomenal word. Yep. Um, kind of bouncing off because I, I love the whole just sales game. I like it a lot just because like, A, you know, that's what I do, but also because everyone's in sales in every aspect of their life. Uh, yep. Whether you're in a sales role, you're, you're selling every single day. Yep. Uh, drop an amen if you agree with that. Um, but how do you think that like sales, especially in an early, early stage startup to kind of get your, get your name out there, like make a splash. What, what do you think are like the best ways to kind of put yourself out there when you don't have cash, you don't have advertising dollars, you just want to get out there? Um, this is really, really hard, especially if you're a B2B company versus B2C. Um, the number one thing is just like add value. I really defer like to the YC, uh, you know, thought process here, which is, Try to get a small group of like around 100 users to love your product and that's a lot easier to then scale than have a thousand people who kind of like it. If you have a small group who love it, they will actually become your marketers. They will become the people who like shout about your product on the rooftop. Off the rooftop. So that's probably the best way to go uh, is just find a problem, solve it for people, make them love it and then they'll take it from there. That's cool. Yeah, because those people are like, it's everything. It's just you're building that tribe. Exactly. That's awesome. Another thing that um, I want to touch on you with is uh, the recruiting process. Yeah. Um, and I say that because um, out of all the teams I've seen, uh, he just has a phenomenal team, great people, just just everyone's so focused and, and just forward and some very talented individuals. What, what do you kind? Of, what's your philosophy on that? I mean, how did you, especially you know the startup game? You know, it's yeah. you're not accepting these huge salaries in a startup game. You're not. Yeah. It's not glorious. It's not sexy. It's unpredictable. You might be out of job in a month. Like it's it's scary. Yeah. But how? What's your kind of philosophy when it goes into choosing the right person? Because as you know, the first few hires can make or break you. Yeah. So. Um, this this one's pretty interesting, and by, by no means is this like the right way to do it. This is just the the process that I followed. Um, I want to find people who are hungry and driven, and you can find that out from the kind of work that they've done in the past, uh, whether it's even actual work or not, but like things that they've done in high school and college. Um, my process, I'll, I'll explain, I guess I'll explain this a little bit. First of all, I never do phone screens. I want to see people face to face. So basically I'll do video screenings initially for people that I'm interested in. And if I don't like the vibe I'm getting from the person, if I if they fail the airport test, like would I survive 12 hours in the airport with this person? Um, then that's a no and there's no need to even move forward because as an early stage startup, we're spending insane amounts of hours together. Uh, I've never hired a person without actually making them do a test, like some kind of like assignment, whether it's sales ops at Twitter or here. I want to see that you can do the work. And, and that's just, just basically going to qualify people, are they serious or not? First of all, you'd be surprised by how many people don't actually do the assignment. They talk the talk and they want the easy way in, and I'm like, great, fail, and you're out. Um, other folks, you want to see that, can they actually perform? How, and actually the biggest sign of intelligence is the type of questions people ask. So if you, if you tell people like, oh, do you have any questions about the business, especially at an early stage startup where everything's lined up against you, everything's ambiguous, there's no clear like five year vision, somebody doesn't come back and ask intelligent questions, they ask people, oh, what are the hours you work and are there free snacks here? That's probably a bad sign too. So. Yeah, damn, that's so true. I like the, the whole thing is, um, can you have a beer with that person? Yeah. Not saying like you got to drink, but like drop a drop a drop a mug if you agree. Like you know, if you're gonna work with someone every single day, you're gonna wake up and see that mug every single day. You better yeah. like each other yeah. because the fact is, is you're gonna you're gonna run into problems, and if you can't problem solve together and make that happen, yeah. uh, that's that's insane. So that's like very solid way. So if you guys are ever looking to recruit, make sure that you always know those people are in and just with you to the end. One thing I'm just going to add there is Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba, he actually had a great uh, quote about hiring. He said, if you find somebody and if you can imagine in five years that they'll become your boss, hire them. 
That's a super simple thing. Like you just see that quality and you're like, yep, that's this person needs to be part of it. So team. surround yourself with people that are better than you. Exactly. Absolutely. That's awesome. And yep. put the pieces to the puzzle. Yep. And yep. you're doing a great job with that. How do you, how important do you think is like vision with, with the startup game? You know, this is, I, you can kind of go into your company's vision. Also, I kind of want to hear that, like the idea, like I'm a, you don't have to because I yeah, know you yeah. guys are currently rebuilding and doing all sorts of sweet yep. stuff. But what do you, how important do you think vision is in both like the recruiting process yep. and just getting your company going? Um, so I actually I'm so sick of people asking me about vision. No offense to you, is this is more of like an investor thing. So um, anybody can tell you, oh, like we're gonna do this three years out, five years out, and if they do, they're completely full of shit because you cannot predict where your product's gonna go, how users are gonna react, what they're gonna ask for, what's gonna happen in the market. Um, so. You initially, when you start the company, you have an idea. You ideally you find a problem to solve, and you kind of figure it out as you go. If you have a grand vision, that's awesome. But be completely open to like changing your direction along the way, because you don't want to be super rigid. Like, no, I told everyone I'm going there, but your users want to go in a different direction, and now you're just upsetting everybody. So. Um, it is don't make promises you can't keep. Exactly. However, when it comes to fundraising, investors, no matter how grand your idea, they'll be like, oh yeah, but what's next? What's like the two, three, four, five things after that? And so you do need to have something intelligent to say there, but tell them like, this is what we're thinking, but we're not completely marrying ourselves to this idea because things could change. That makes sense. Now let's kind of get into like a little bit of the dirty, you know, a little bit of that dirt. Sure, let's do it. What, uh, what are the things that kind of like when you started the business, because this is your first company you started. Sure. What are the things that they don't tell you? You know, what are the things that make you literally just want to like just quit? Like just like what are the things that you've encountered that are just tough that just can really kind of bring you down? Um, it's not bringing me down. I didn't expect to be doing this much like administrative work. The amount of stuff I do when it comes to like legal finance, um, staying on top of our accounting and all that is just insane. Um, you know, CEO of a company, you, people think like, oh, I want to start a company. I'll be CEO. I'll be so glamorous. I'll be your, like my own boss. You're not your own boss. You do all the shit work. Your job is to like remove blockers so that the rest of the team can actually do their work. Um, but we've had crazy things happen. Like I had, apparently we owed $21,000 in like Delaware franchise tax and our accountant missed that. And so I had to like talk to a lawyer or hire a new accountant and we resolved it, uh, for $600, but I had like 12 heart attacks in the meantime. So there's just a lot of stuff that you cannot plan for. Um, like Mark Zuckerberg says, don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes, just make them and recover as fast as possible because they're inevitable. Boom, that's a major key. Drop a key if you agree with that. Like that's phenomenal. And what's your opinion on the whole go for no thing? Uh, Gonzalo said in one of the interviews, he said, I, like he's the CEO of Pratsma, he says, I am in the business of being told no. Every day, I need every day I am told no. And he's got this big old beard and he's just this big friendly. <laughs> is that what that's for? Okay. I, yeah, maybe. It's his no, it's his no shaker. It's his, gotcha. it's a hater, hater blocker, I guess. Yeah. But what's your opinion on like, you know, the, the, the fact that you will just be told no all the time, not just with fundraising, but especially in the beginning, you know, of starting a business. Um, get used to it. Like you have to just like thicken your skin and just literally not give a shit about the no. It's actually not only don't give a shit, but ask questions. I actually try to find out why the no, why did this happen? Why do you not like our product? Why does this, why do you not want to invest in the company? Because if you take a no and then you go sulk about it, that's not gonna fix anything. But if you collect some information and then iterate a little bit about your pitch or what's going on, then before you know it, those no's turn into yeses. But um, just get used to it. Dope. Um, what do you do to stay sane? Um, <laughs> cause I, cause I, I, know, I don't know if I'm that saying though, but yeah, I like, what do you, cause I obviously one thing that's very important and, and you put it in the grind. I mean, you literally grind more than probably anyone I've seen here. Like in terms of just like you're, you're committed, man. Like it's inspiring. It's badass. but like, God. I know there has to be some time. Like, what do you recommend for people kind of keeping that, like keeping your mind? Cause if you're focused 24 seven, sometimes it can almost be, you, you stop getting creative or something like, what do you like to do on your free time just to kind of relax um i work out 
Um, I used to work out a lot more, and I'm putting on this nice little burrito body courtesy of uh, Startup Land. But um, working out for sure, I've gotten into headspace and meditating. That's been helpful to me because you just need to like decompress. I've never been able to do it. Like, like I agree with meditation. Like, I want to be good at it. Same with yoga. Like, I, I'm, I'm definitely not good at it. But I just the act of trying and putting down my phone and just not being completely like wired up the whole time is great. Yeah, for sure. Um, have a supportive girlfriend. Shout out to Roxana. Boom. Thank you. Oh, I love you. Yeah, boyfriend of the year. Girlfriend of the year. Um, and other than that, to be honest, like, I don't know. T talking through it. Actually, one thing that's amazing about being in an accelerator is, you know, venting and talking to other people who are dealing with stuff too. Before you know it, you're like, oh, my problems don't seem too big. Or you can get some words of advice. So that's been awesome. Just chatting with people here. and Hell yeah. Yeah, because everyone's in the same boat, you know? Yeah, we do, we, we do the CEO roundtable every Thursday to, like, air out our problems. And before you know it, it's like a whiskey-sponsored, like, therapy session, but it works, so. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing what whiskey and problem-solving can do. Yep. Um, what are some basic, like, what advice would you say if I'm, you know, I, I want to become a glamorous CEO of a company, I want to start a startup, or maybe I'm getting into direct sales, or I'm getting into business for myself, you know, what would be the advice to someone that you wish you were told when you were starting, before starting a company? Um, the first question is just like, why? Why do you want to do this? And if the answer is like, to get rich quick, that's the dumbest thing ever, because this the path of a startup to make you rich is very highly unlikely. Um, so just find out, like, root cause why. Is it because you want to make a difference? Is it because there's a problem that you're passionate about that nobody else is solving or the way they solve it sucks? So start off with a cause because every day you're going to be doing this for the next three, four, five, seven, ten years. Um, if you're not passionate about it, you're, you're not, it's not going to survive. Um, and two is yes, surround yourself by great people and just push. And you said that really cool. You said that in the past throughout all your different businesses that you've been a part of, um, you've built some quality relationships with yeah. different, you know, VCs and just yeah. people of influence. Yep. How important do you think those relationships have been in your life? Yeah, I mean, I kind of wish somebody told this to me in college. Um, spend a lot of time networking, meet as many people as you can. Um, I one of the folks I hired at Twitter, my first hire, Ellen De Silva. Shout out to you. Uh, she's a phenomenal networker, and what she would do is every week she'd get coffee with somebody at Twitter that she didn't know. And when she left four, week, four years later, you can imagine by how big of her sphere of influence is and how well connected she is. So you have to put in the effort because uh, actually your network in Silicon Valley trumps hard work and smarts any day of the week. So um, definitely put a lot of effort. Hell yeah. That. It's not what you know is who you know. Exactly. Hell Sorry, yeah. I was completely blanked out for a second. Oh, no, for sure. No, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I could talk to you about all this stuff like forever. I mean, you're just on point just I love it I'm just figuring things out man that's it yeah and, and it seems like the fact that you've been able to just figure out the different aspects um, do you ever get nervous do you ever get nervous like just does, does life ever hit you and you're like what am I doing like <laughs> it's, it's not it's not nervousness it's just like yeah constant stress because you know you have a fiduciary duty to your investors you have responsibility to, to your team um, if you take your work seriously like your work is a reflection of you and you don't want that to, so like failing is like not an option you just have to will yourself into success but the greatest thing about it is is also just on the flip side incredible adrenaline with it right yeah I mean you're probably you're like I remember talking to my parents about this and my dad's like wow you created something out of nothing and that feels really good so which a lot of people can do these days relatively easy with all the tools out there yeah thanks thanks for uh squashing down how how good i felt about that yeah hell yeah let's we'll flip it up real yeah. quick are there any tools you'd recommend for people to read on like a daily basis that would help them kind of just like that you potentially do to stay in the know with what's going on and maybe the tech world or just in general uh, um, yeah, I mean, this is something I also did a very bad job of while I was employed at Twitter, having my you know cushy job. Um, it's so important to just stay up to date with what's happening. So on my way to work, while I'm here in the morning, get on LinkedIn, get on TechCrunch, find out what's happening. If somebody's saying blockchain a lot and you don't know what blockchain is, you should probably f like spend some time watching YouTube videos and learning about that because when it's time to network and somebody brings it up, you want to at least sound semi-knowledgeable. Sick. So you have, to, you have to put in the effort in every aspect. Like, stay up to date on things. Network. Grind. It's not easy. That's awesome. That's so true. It's like, if you don't know something, look it up. Google it. Yep. We got Google all day. Yep. Um, we're going to wrap this up, like, real soon. Is there any books you'd recommend anyone? Any books that have changed your life? Uh, not changed my life, but one of the... Typical one story is like the hard thing about hard things by Ben Horowitz. So it gives you a nice reality check about how hard it is to start a company, like and how tough the entire journey is. Um, 
I've, I've read a ton. Uh, y Combinator published a small book about like how to start a startup. And then they have, it. by the way, that's probably the best resource. If you want to start a company, they, Y Combinator and Stanford teamed up and they have a whole class called how to start a startup. And they actually put that all up online for free on YouTube. Watch it. It will give you advice on like how to start a company, how to incorporate, how to hire people, product strategy. It's like an hour long. Um, each of them is about an hour long, but it's well worth it. It's, it's a crash course in startups, essentially. Hell yeah, you know, make some hot chocolate and go to work with yep, that. That's exactly. awesome. I think there's a lot of just lessons that you can learn throughout all this stuff. And if anyone's listening, um, the big thing I learned, because a re big reason I love to do these lives is I, I get to learn. It forces me to learn. It forces me to network and meet new people and, and just kind of dive in. It seems like every single thing you're doing is is just a skill and you got to think it like are you building skills every single day yeah. that are going to keep you above keep you afloat and keep your mind going yep. because just like you said it's not the cubicle that i think that people hate it's just that lack of progress you know what i mean because i mean i we're going to probably be in a cubicle soon but in a startup you know <laughs> uh, yeah. it's just like it's just that people always want to be growing and learning i think it's also this is not the path for everybody right so if you enjoy your nine to five and enjoy having work-life balance and getting good rest and going to the gym like props to you and i probably can't wait to do that again after the startup journey is over but if you're hungry and motivated and you're like, oh, it's not the right time, the right time is always now. Just do it. That's awesome. Just do it. Jump on and fly. Yep. Freaking like Django over here. He, he did a thing with him. He's like a skydiver. He's on 50 exactly. dives. Yep. He seems he's going to do the, 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 the suit the thing. The wing thing. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I'd, I'd be too petrified. To yeah, I, that's insane. Uh, we'll wrap this up. Uh, any other advice that you'd want to give on anyone about entrepreneurship, the journey, maybe um, just things that sh you know, you've learned and, and lessons that you think could help people? Um, it's, it's fucking hard. It's super hard. Every single day is like, it's tough. You have challenges every day. So just don't let it get you down. Um, and I think the one thing I've also learned is, um, even no matter how busy you are and how tired you are and how many problems you have to face, uh, always pay it forward to other people. So if somebody reaches out and asking for help, just do it. Don't even think about it. And like, Oh no, but nobody's helping me and feeling sorry for yourself. Just do it put out as much good karma as you can. Things will come around when they need to come around, but make time to help other people. Pay it forward. That's awesome. What yeah. a great, happy way to just... It's true though. Like it's very, very true. So And it comes full circle. So you never know what, what can come out of that. Yeah. Uh, how can people contact you? And also you have a soft launch going right now for your business. Yeah, we're gonna kick off our beta pretty soon. So if you go to cushion.ai, request an invite. The wait list is getting pretty large. So I would highly recommend getting on that. Um, you can reach me at paul at cushion.ai. And yeah, that's about it. We're going to make magic happen. So guys, yeah. definitely reach out. You know, the best part is connecting good people. Who knows? Maybe you can work with Paul. Maybe, you know, you want to connect, network. Who knows? It's all about, you know, the people in your life. So with that said, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. We got to no get to the gym at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and thank you guys so much for jumping in. I uh, love y'all. Definitely stay tuned. We have some phenomenal people coming on the next three days. All high level, awesome human beings in different fields. It'll be awesome. So with that said, if you guys liked this, throw this a share. Would be highly appreciated for yep. the Jones. And again, I love ya. So it, that's it. Peace out. Keep it real.